So we're being asked to find the Laplace transform of this function. So solution. So recall the Laplace transform of a function f of t is equal to the improper integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st f of t with respect to t. Now, uh, my s's, well, it's a bad s. My s's look like this. Uh, why? I don't want to confuse them with uh, fives. OK, so let's do this problem. So we're going to take the Laplace transform of a piecewise function. So Laplace, the Laplace of f of t is equal to, well, we have to use this definition here, right? So uh, you'll notice that between 0 and 1, it's equal to negative 1. So we can break the integral up. So first we'll go from 0 to 1, and it's negative 1. So it'll be e to the negative st times negative 1 dt plus, and then we'll go from 1 to infinity. So from 1 to infinity, it'll be e to the negative st times 1 dt. Okay, so breaking it up is key. Once you break it up, it's all about being careful. So let's write it again, just to clean things up. So this, this is the integral from 0 to 1, e to the negative st dt. And the negative, I'm going to put it, uh, I'll leave it here. There's the negative, plus the integral from 1 to infinity, e to the negative st dt. OK, whenever you have to integrate e to like the ax dx, you can just divide by a. So it's e to the ax over a plus c, you know, as long as a is not 0. But if a is 0, it's silly because e to the 0 is equal to 1. So that's, that's, that's boring. Uh, and usually it's not 0. OK, so here we get negative e to the negative st divided by negative s. And we're integrating from 0 to 1. Here, let's do two steps at once. So first, I'm going to write plus limit b approaching infinity. And basically, without writing it, I'm going to replace the infinity with a b. Okay, And now we'll integrate this. So we get negative e to the negative st over s, right? It's over negative s. I just put the negative upstairs. And this is from 1 to b, just taking shortcuts because these problems become so long. Let's keep going. So this is really bothering me, these negatives. So I'm going to rewrite it first, even before plugging in these guys. So e to the negative st over s from 0 to 1 plus the limit as b approaches infinity. Uh, now I'll go ahead and plug these in. So first you plug in the b, right? So it's negative e to the negative sb over s. And then it's minus. But you already have a minus here, so you're going to get a plus, plus e to the negative s over s. I'm going to put this in parentheses just to make it look a little better. All right, let's keep going. You plug in the 1 first, so you get e to the negative s over s minus, and when you plug in 0 here, you just get e to the 0, so you get 1 over s. OK, here's where we have to be careful. We're taking the limit as b approaches infinity. So this is going to be this. It's not going to change. But what's happening to this? Try to think of this term here as follows. So it's really negative 1 over s e to the s b. And so as b gets really, really big, so as b approaches infinity, this guy approaches 0, because you have 1 over something that's getting really, 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 really big. So this whole thing is getting really, 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 really small. And that's going to be OK as long as s is positive, right? Because if s is negative, then it's going to come back upstairs. So if it's positive, it will stay in the denominator. So this will approach 0. So this is plus 0 plus e to the negative s over s. Let me go back to the same color, because it looks really weird. OK, this is e to the negative s over s minus 1 over s plus e to the negative s over s. And is that it? Uh, looks like we can combine these, right? These guys are the same. So we have two of them. So this is 2e to the negative s over s 
minus 1 over our fancy cursive S. And in all of this, S was positive. So it's important to write that down. S was positive. And that's how you find the Laplace transform of a piecewise function. This one was kind of easy.